So we often talk about domestic abuse, but could yes. the root problem be seen as all abuse? Um, so isn't it about learned behaviours that um, people already have where abuse is taken from the workplace into the home or schools into the home or vice versa? I think that is um, an extraordinarily wonderful question. It's, it's, it's also, it's, it's very complex and opens up a, a huge can of worms. We have to tackle it from, from grassroots. Um, and if we see it or we're aware of it, I do believe that now got, gone are the days where we turn, turn a blind eye, you yeah. know, um, because I genuinely think it, 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 it's every single one of us, it's our responsibility. And that does it, it doesn't matter who you are, how much you've got, what you've done, what you've not done, who you know, who you don't know, you know, where you live, social, you know, economics, anything. We've all got to stand together because if we don't, then the world is not ever going to become a better place. Oh, truly, Grace has brilliantly touched upon learned behaviours. But that's really from the point of view of the abuser, right? Doesn't it also happen the other way around, where the abused individual gets so used to being abused that they actually think that it's their fault? And there is also a term for it, which is called gaslight themselves. What, what, what are your thoughts on that? I was astonished that coercive control didn't actually become a crime until 2015 now, now that is um i think ab abhorrent you know and going back to i i've seen it with my own eyes with people i've loved very dearly um it's a very sensitive area because i have absolutely seen the gaslighting i have seen strong strong people i love um, believing that it is absolutely their fault, you, you know, um, and constantly making excuses, constantly making excuses. And I think that, you know, the worst thing we can do is, is stand or sit in judgment, because if you haven't walked in those shoes, then you yep. cannot know what that is like. Uh, Julie, um, you are a shining example of succeeding in an industry that's renowned for narcissistic abuse against women. Have you observed that in your career and has it changed? I have absolutely observed that in my career from, um, you know, way back when I first started off. Um, I have experienced um, sexual predators. I have experienced um, sexism, um, you know, particularly when I was younger, because then of course, with age becomes experience. And then it becomes, as you quite rightly say, a different narcissistic level um, of, of abuse, of, of, of put downs. Um, but I absolutely have, and I've thought about this a lot, and uh, obviously um, we're not here to, to name names, you know, but yes, back in the day, um, yes, some very, you know, prominent, well-known uh, people, um, I've had to fight my ground against, you know, uh, which I've always been very, very proud of. I think in my industry, I think it's okay to say this, I believe that females are affected more. It was much more scary for me because I didn't, I didn't have the tools and, and the courage to apply it, you know, when necessary or all, all of the time, you know, but with age comes fearlessness without question, right. definitely. When we talk about abuse, there are many types of abuse and some of them are cultural. Uh, you know, quite sensitive as well, where you've got FGM or forced marriages and so on. So where, re, how much can we get involved? And because it's quite a sensitive issue, um, what are your thoughts on that? 
really, yeah. in terms of involvement where cultural issues are concerned. To tread into someone else's territory can often, often the response can be that that is unwelcome, you know, and it is unwanted. And I, um, yes, I, I believe that we have to be fearless on, on tackling that because um, what, what's the alternative? Do we walk away? Because as you, as you sort of say, you know, we're, we're, we're treading into a, a very sensitive area. Um, and again, if I think it, it can often be a very vicious circle, can't it? Because it's that terrible concept of, well, if they don't want our help, we've tried. So what do we do? Do we walk away? Do we move on? Or do we keep on? you know, banging down that door, even if that person or those people are saying, no, you're a nuisance, you know, go away. We, we don't, we don't, we don't need you here. We don't need your help. We don't need you poking your nose in, you know. Um, it's, it is, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's such a sensitive area and it can explode, can't it? And, Absolutely. You know, very 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 quickly um but do, we do have a duty of care and if yes. we know something is not right then we really should be doing something about it yes absolutely yeah i i I, I definitely come from 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 that place uh Gulnaz. you know it would take an awful lot for me to ignore and, and to walk away because i just won't be able to you know look in the mirror or hold my head up high if 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 i hadn't carried on fighting. Uh, Julian, um, one of the biggest ways that behaviours are learned is from watching programmes on television and on the big screen, your industry. Apart from the so-called watershed, which has definitely been redundant during lockdown, are there enough constraints on content creators like yourself? Your industry bears a huge responsibility where great damage can be done, but also great good can be done like your own Oscar winning film. Can we not have one without the other? That is a brilliant, brilliant question. And um, I have been thinking about that a lot recently. And you're right, you know, does it, does it come down to giving the people what they want? Does it come down to giving the people what they think they want? Does it come down to, to, to us because we, we, ha we have a duty of care, which we do. We have a huge responsibility um, because sometimes that's a big, big part of what a lot of people are, have, have got. And sometimes it, it, it's all they've got, you know, it's their escape from other things that are going on in their life, you know. Um, and there's a lot to be said for, for pushing the buttons, pushing the boundaries. You know, I'm, I'm a huge believer in, in telling extraordinary stories. I've always been very much against, um, you know, anything that's gratuitous, you know, anything that if I hear conversations about, you know, oh, well, you know, that's, you know, that's going to make us some money. That's going to get us more viewers. That's going to get us the front page of, you know, that's going to get us an interview with. That's, that's not for me. And as you say, so, sometimes we can, we, we can push it. We have to push it. But I, I still think, you know, it's still, it, it, it can become a very dark place if there are people saying, well, I don't care, you know, I can do what I want. We can do what we want. Um, because all that, all that happens is that just spills into real life. And I certainly don't want to be a part of that, you know, but I also do want to make, um, you know, fearless films. So inspired by your film, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Uh, and actually, brilliant seems like a very strange word to use 
a film that can make you feel so sad and actually yeah. angry. But I think that's why you won an Oscar because you can do that in 15 minutes is, is incredible. So, um, uh, and I have to say that I was left thinking, well, that little girl was being abused. What's, that's no different. That's abuse by her parents, by the school in, in some ways. And people are starting now, aren't they? You know, it, it's, yeah. it's a wonderful thing to see. The castings, you know, that I see now, and that's quite right. You know, Absolutely. not it's not authentic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it, gone are the days now. We can't have people pretending that that's you know what yeah. what they are, who they are, because they just don't know. No. You know, and that's become for me unforgivable. So, um, I'm uh, delighted um, all across the line, as I say, that people are now using their voice to tackle that. Um, yeah. And we're seeing much more diver diversity on screen, much more inclusivity. Um, we've just got, we've got to keep fighting. Yeah. yeah. Well, I yeah. thought it was an amazing film and I thought the Oscar was so well deserved. Uh, it was funny when you were on the judging panel a few weeks ago and you were introducing yourself, you completely forgot that you'd won an Oscar. So, <laughs> I know. Whatever. <laughs> Well, Julie, we never forget it, you know, so we, we remember it. Well, that's, that's very, very kind. I mean, Gulnaz, you and myself, we spoke about this a while ago, that, that for me, that little golden man is to help to pay it forward, you know. Absolutely. Is, is, to, is to help in, in any way at all I can, not just in the arts, but in any other area of life. And that's how I see him. And for, you know, those, those two years of, 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 of hard work, you know, 24-7, um, I'm delighted and very proud, you know, that, that that's how... I feel I can hold my head up high and say that is what he's being used for. Grace, yeah. when lockdown's over, we'll have a cup of tea, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Oh. <laughs> no, mocktails for Grace Mock and cocktails for us. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>